will remind you of a story that I've told before. 1979. Tulsa, Oklahoma, USA. Father and the Lord and five of us went to Connecticut camp meeting. There for the first time I saw the lame walking in our presence. I saw healings. I saw miracles. I was a young Christian then. I've been reading about it. We'll be having testimonies of healings, all right. But I, I mean, I saw this raw demonstration of the power of God. Ah. Uh, well, that is uh, Dr. Adeboye uh, giving us an introduction to a program that he attended in 1979 in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma uh, with uh, Kenneth Hagin being their host. And uh, you heard him saying that he saw the lame walking he saw miracles being done. He saw raw demonstration of the power of God. Uh, let me say this. Uh, I acknowledge that I acknowledge God's mercy on me uh, that God guided me away from Kenneth Hagin when I became a Christian in December 1976, three years before uh, this story that Dr. Adeboye is saying. It is purely by grace. It was I didn't know anything. I I had access, like so many other people, to the free materials that Ken Higgin was sending to everybody. But God by his mercy guided me away from this evil. That is not the issue I want to discuss. I'm raising this so that you might know that this is a heavy job on my part letting you know that it is by the mercy of god that you are hearing my voice warning you about false teachings about snake pits about evil in religion Dr. Adeboye said he saw raw demonstration of the power of God. I'm going I'm making this short video to let you know that God actually has means of us finding out whether any particular demonstration of power is from him or not that is the crux of this particular video the bible in deuteronomy chapter 13 has a guideline on how you see the power of god dr adeboye and his uh, father in the faith and all of them that went from Nigeria and other places to Kenneth Hagin. They were more interested in power, in the demonstration of raw power, than in the truth. In 
Exodus, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13, God gave the guideline. He said, in case any prophet arose among you and showed by signs and wonders and miracles, and those miracles actually happened, and that particular prophet now tells you that you should come and worship another god, you should know I am not the one that that person represents. By merely seeing miracles done. Let's give it to Dr. Adiboye that he actually saw a miracle. He actually saw some miracles. This is not the time to dispute whether any miracle actually happened or not. I can tell you no miracle happened. But that is actually not the issue. Let us say miracle happened. The Dr. Adeboye and the people following him and the people around him, did they apply? Did they apply? Did they apply the tests that God in Deuteronomy chapter 18, chapter 13, verse 1 to 5, says that people must apply? If I raise up a dead person right in your front does that make me a man of god the bible in deuteronomy chapter 13 will beg to disagree with you because the bible in the book of exodus speaks of the servants of pharaoh bringing out serpents snakes from their own roads. So, merely seeing miracle, merely seeing miracle, most, m many of you hearing me, watching me, would have seen snake handlers in markets. Does that mean the shaman handling snakes in the market, does that mean he is a man of God? Everyone that does miracle around us, can we now say, let us even say that the person mentioned the name Christ. Once you mention Christ and you do miracles, does that mean you are a man of God? That is actually the snake pit that, that Dr. Adeboye and everybody in Pentecostalism, that is the snake pit they are falling into. That is the reason why my work is very, very important for you. If God has mercy on you and you listen to me, you should get this. The Bible is God's word. It has guidelines on everything spiritual. Everything. Everything spiritual is in the Bible. What you should do. What you should see. Even when you see miracles. By the lame walking, let's say that the lame actually walked that day. By the blind seeing, let us assume the blind actually saw. By cancers disappearing, let us assume any cancer actually disappeared. Dr. Adiboye has concluded that he was watching, he was seeing raw demonstration of God's power. Uh, this is going to be a very short video. What I'm going to do is to let you know the teachings, basically, the teachings of this man of God that was demonstrating the power of God. Man of God, in fact, had come open and closed. That was demonstrating so much power of God so that we can apply the tests of Deuteronomy chapter 13 of how we know that a particular prophet speaks or works from God or not. And that will help us to discover whether Kenneth Hagin was ever a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please pay attention. And I want you to distribute this video. Somebody might escape hell. 
somebody somewhere in eternity might be grateful will be grateful for you, to you if you share this video it's going to be short as i said maybe 20 minutes maybe less but let's listen to dr adeboye and then we, we read the bible so i made up my mind i'm not going back to nigeria without meeting this man they said it is impossible to meet him i said i will meet him when there is a way there is a way to cut a long story short one way or the other he gave me an appointment okay let, let's listen, let's pay attention to what happened during the appointment, during the meeting of uh, Dr. Adeboye with Kenai Hagen. Let's pay, let's, just let us pay attention. Finally, he came to me, the one who booked the appointment. I said, young man, what do, uh, what do you want? I said, sir. What I want is everything that is in you, that makes you you. That is what I want. I see. Uh, Dr. Adebo, you wanted everything that was in Kenai Hagen. You should, you should listen to that very, very well. Because that is one of the very first wrong teaching about christianity about that these people teach they call it transference of the spirit it's not in the new testament it's not in the new testament even in the even in the old testament where you could have something very close and it's really not That of the encounter between Elisha and Elijah is an unusual thing. God's spirit, the spirit of God, cannot be physically transferred from one person to another. So the idea of Dr. Adeboye wanting something that was totally inside of Kenai Hagen to be infested in him is an occult thing please just note that it's totally an occult thing it's not in christianity the followers of christ christianity is like pyramid everybody is at the base the only person who is at the top is christ So I, I cannot transfer anything inside of me to you. No. Each person faces God through Christ only. So the idea of can I hear infesting whatever was inside of him in our young doctor to start with it's an occult thing. When you seek for occult power, at times you get it. So let's pay let's pay more attention, please. There will be some other day when we will talk seriously about the transference of the spirit that these people teach. I'm only letting you know that it's purely something that shamans do. It's an occult thing. Is an occult thing. You might say, "Oh, it is very popular in Nigeria." No, the fact that it is popular does not does not mean it is it is it is it is, it is biblical. Factually, everything they do, factually, more than ninety nine percent of what they do in Nigerian churches, they are popular, but they are not in the Bible. So this is just one of it. But I said this is not this is not the day to actually deal with this. In detail but just note it 
that what Dr. Adeboye has asked for and what he was going to get are things they distribute among sorcerers, not children of God. He was shocked. He said, what do you say? I repeated myself. He said, okay. He called the secretary in and said, this one want books, give him books. This one want tapes, give him tapes. This one wants a magazine, give him magazine. And then he said, they should all move out. Then he turned to me and said, young man, kneel down. I went on my knees. I saw his hands coming towards me. That's all I remembered. Did you get what Dr. Adebo just said? Did you note? Did you notice what he has just said? That after he knelt down, he saw Kenneth Higgins' hands coming towards him. And that was all he remembered. The coming of the hands of Dr. I of uh, Kenneth Hagen caused Dr. Adeboye to lose consciousness. That is what they call being slain in the spirit among them. It's one of those phrases, one of those phrases they coined among them. The phrase is from the occult. Please listen to me. The act itself is from the occult. Or how many times did you read in your Bible of Peter's hands coming down on somebody's head and the person losing his consciousness? Or, or Paul or James? In Hinduism, it is called Shakti Path. Shakti part that is what it is called in hinduism in african traditional religion it is available also what dr adeboye said he has just suffered from is actually in actual fact evidence of transference of demonic power demonic spirit from Kenneth Hagin to himself. It is not the spirit of God that was being transferred from Kenneth Hagin to Enoch Adeboye. Never. It is demonic spirit, power of Satan that was being transferred from Kenai Hagen to Enoch Adeboye. And please let me let me warn whoever is privileged to want to see this video. In case in case you have ever ever lost consciousness in any of these their so called Christian services I want to warn you to pray to the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse you from demonic spirits normally infused, normally injected during such loss of consciousness. Losing consciousness is never part of Christianity. 
This is one evil that has spread so far, so deep, and it, because it is so dramatic, and people are looking for drama. They are looking for anything that shows some dramatic performances. People have assumed that whenever this thing happened, and this thing happens virtually every day in our schools, in fellowship of Christian students, in all those so-called Christian fellowships in the various schools, they transfer demonic spirits from one person to the other. Thinking that it is the power and spirit of God they are transferring among themselves. It has never occurred to them that there is no example of it in the New Testament. It has never occurred to them that neither Paul, nor Peter, nor James, nor any other of the apostles, the people that followed God for three years, that none of them actually taught or exhibited any such thing. It has not, never occurred to them. It's not a very small thing. It is not a very small thing. Eternity, our eternity, is the issue at stake. And the devil is doing everything to bring, to bring up miracles. I'm not going to call it fake miracles because they are actually miracles. But they are magic. The issue is the source. The issue is the source. The serpents of Pharaoh were no less serpents than the one of Moses. If Pharaoh's serpents had beaten you, you would have died. So they are not fake miracles. The issue is who is the person behind it? That is actually the main issue. But let, let's listen a little more, please. By the time I woke up, I was on the floor. He was kneeling beside me, his two hands on my head, and he was praying the Holy Spirit furiously. By the time he woke up, sound mind, sound mind is what God promise those that follow his son that he has given us the spirit of sound mind not the spirit that falls down and and does off no you, you can just look at what the situation just begin to picture look at the situation if god wants to really give you knowledge and information about yourself The way for him to do it is to send you to sleep so that out of stupor, you now just be coming around. No, the spirit of the devil is not called the spirit of deception for nothing. Satan is, he, Satan's spirit is not called the spirit of deception for nothing. I, I hope you will not allow him to send you to sleep as you listen to this. Because it would like you to lose track of what I'm talking about. By the time he woke up, according to Dr. Adeboye, Kenai Higgins was praying the Holy Spirit furiously. Kenai Higgins has ne Kenai Higgins never knew Holy Spirit. Never. And I think he never knew Holy Spirit. So he couldn't possibly have been praying the Holy Spirit. Either silently or furiously. He was praying in what? In, in a satanic tongue. In a tongue that you cannot find this example in the Bible. That was the tongues. The, that was the tongue Ken Hagen was praying in. So they, they were they were a group, a group, a pack of deceived people deceiving themselves and some of them are deceived thinking that well Gana Hagen was white it couldn't be occultic yeah I, I know I know some of you think that way uh, Gana Hagen was a white man 
How could he be? How could he be occultic? That's the that's a very sad thing. That's a very sad belief that a good number of you people think. At times when they talk, they talk of uh, of black magic. There's, there's nothing black. There's nothing black in magic. It's, it's an epithet. It's the devil trying to give it a name. Some of the best shamans, most of the best shamans are not black. I can let you know that one. So, in fact, actually, all the, all the best magic men on earth, they are actually white people. They are. They are Europeans. Central Asians. The Chinese. The gurus of India. Yeah. Yes. So when 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 you when you when you hear this, and okay, can I take a white man and he's talking of the Bible? It it can it couldn't possibly it couldn't possibly be a, be a black magician. It couldn't possibly be in black magic. It's because you disregard the Bible. It's because you disregard the Bible. Because the Bible is the only book you can trust that does not lie about the origin of magic. It is a person that you cannot see with your eyes. His name is Satan. And he walks through every tribe, every race, every nationality, every language on earth. Particularly among people who have subscribed themselves to serve him. And Kenai Hagin was really one of such. So uh, you might say, okay, Kenai Hagin was this and, and he was mentioning the Bible. No, no, the God of the Bible is one. And Kenai Hagin never knew him, he never worshipped the God of the Bible. Never. So when our doctor said that uh, Kenneth Hagin was praying the Holy Spirit furiously, ignorance multiplied by ignorance. Multiple ignorance. Kenneth Hagin never, never prayed in the Holy Spirit. Never. Because he never knew God's Spirit. But let's pay a little more attention. When I got to I knew I got what I wanted. Uncle, what did you get? Yeah. I, I heard you say you got what you wanted. What actually did you get? What did you get from Kenai Higgins? You got what you wanted. Yeah. Sadly, that could be true. And that is actually the reason why you should pay attention. Because it could be true that Dr. Adeboye got what he wanted. And his career in the last 40 years, since around 1979, will give the impression he actually did get what he wanted. He got what he wanted. But is what Dr. Adeboye, what he got? Is it what Christians, followers of Christ get? Is it? A little attention, please. What do you want? Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and tell Him what you want. Just ask God, ask God. And pray as if your life depends on Him. Open your mouth and cry to Him. What you are thirsty for is what you will get what you task for that's what you will get 
Yeah, so to some extent, maybe <laughs> I can tell you, Dr. Adewe just says one thing that I will tell you I agree with. To a large extent, you get what you are looking for. <laughs> the truth is that the heart of man does not look for God until God actually quickens the man. So those people gathering around him, all around Dr. Adeboye, they may get what they are looking for. But surely everybody knows that they are not looking for God. I'm returning very briefly before I end this. Returning to the test set out by God in Deuteronomy chapter 13 of how you know what test you apply to people who do miraculous things. So as to know whether they are from God or not. And on this, I'll be... I will just be touching a few of the teachings of uh, Kenai Hagin. Contrasting those teachings with the teachings of the Bible is going to be very short. Checking the teachings of Kenai Hagin. And one of them is what you have right now on your screen. Where Kenai Hagin taught, taught and I, I'm quoting him directly. You are as much an incarnation of, of God as Jesus Christ was. That's one of the teachings of this powerful man of God. You, you are as much an incarnation of God as Jesus Christ was. That's one of his teachings. The meaning of that as you can see, is that there is nothing special about the conception of Christ. You too, you are specially conceived as Christ. Immaculate conception means nothing. You are as much God as Christ is or ever was. That is the meaning of that teaching. Of that one liner that you see on top of your screen where this powerful man of God was teaching his people or even at the time that he was bequeathing power on Dr. Adeboye he was teaching his people that they were as much incarnation of God as the Lord Jesus Christ was the Lord Jesus Christ to Dr. to Kenneth Hagin. So so. It was just another man. He was the Lord Jesus Christ was just another man. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the was the word was God. No. no those kind of verses they don't register with Kenneth Hagin. It will be called Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. No, 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 not with Kenneth Higgin. Kenneth Higgin never taught all those kind of things. As far as Kenneth Higgin was concerned, you are as much an incarnation of God as the Lord Jesus Christ. You were conceived the same way Christ was conceived. That is just one. That's just one. If you know a little of your Bible, that should be scary enough. Because no human being is saved if the person does not believe that Christ was more than a mere man. Because the blood of no mere man can save any other person. Another thing that Dr. Adis, uh, big man of God, taught during his time is what you have again now on your screen. According to Kenneth Hagin, atonement, that is payment for sin, 
was done in hell not on the cross the teaching of the bible that the blood of christ is what saved us from our sins no can i higgins said no can i higgins said no can i copeland say, says no atonement payment for sin was done in hell after satan and his demons had punished christ well enough so what the bible has written in so many places about where payment was done about when christ said it is finished no can i even say no no atonement was done where nobody could see it and what are the implications of this according to can i christ's blood was not the price paid you don't go ahead and believe in the blood of christ for payment for your sin no you have to go to hell before you can locate your salvation where did can i again get this information what part of the bible says this no can i again will tell you when he was alive he will tell you he got special revelations jesus christ came to show me and of course you know you know you know you know dr adebo actually got what he what he wanted because jesus christ comes to show him virtually every day things that are not in the bible just as jesus christ was showing can i hang it too according to can i hang it, the devil is a core redeemer to us because the punishment of the devil on christ in hell was actually what god saw and god decided it was enough so we, we, we perhaps we should thank the devil for punishing christ in hell perhaps we should thank the devil because uh, if we did not punish christ enough maybe maybe our sins would have we would still have had to to pay for part of our sins Of course, according to Kenai Hagen, Christ's blood was not worth more than any man's blood. The blood of the only person who ever lived on earth without sin, as far as Kenai Hagen was, concern, was concerned, that blood was no better than any other man's blood. In fact, some few years ago, you, you heard the same thing from Kenneth Copeland, saying that if it were to be on the cross, if it were to be the death on the cross, he too could have done it. He too could have just died for the whole, for the whole world. Let me put on your screen another teaching of Kenneth Hagin. This powerful man of God that Dr. Adeboye in 1979, with his father and the Lord, and all the entourage from Nigeria, could not but visit. What you have on your screen is another teaching of Ken Higgin that Christ was actually born again. Yeah. They said, you please start paying attention to what they teach. Start paying attention to what everybody teaches. The truth about God is, is in the form of a word in the Bible. So you have to read the Bible. You have to basically read the Bible. I advise people, stop going to any church in Nigeria. Virtually every one of them is infested. Virtually every one of them is infested with, with the evil that they teach. Pick the Bible. Start reading from the gospel according to St. John. 
so that you get introduced to the real person christ to to god in human flesh the only savior Actually, everyone, I've, I've, I've been to many, many of these churches. The Baptist, the Equa, the Cousin, nothing, nothing. You go to them, what you have, in fact, actually every one of them today are the teachings of Kenahigi, the teachings of Hinduism, the teachings of the occult is basically what you have left. In fact, actually every one of those churches, apart from one or two that are springing up now, and of course, when you go to those small ones, bringing up, perhaps you 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 will be lucky to see thirty people there. Because the truth of God, people are not interested in those truths. But that is the only thing that saves. The word of God is, is the only thing that saves. The truth is what is what saves, because the truth is Christ. As far as Kenneth Higgins was concerned, Christ Christ was born again. This time in hell. Christ was born again. When you listen to the teachings of Gana Hagen, when you li listen to the teachings of, of, his, of his disciples, this cannot sound strange to you. They all teach it. Oyedepo teaches it. Yes, I've heard him teach things like this. Kenneth Copeland teaches it. Paul White teaches it. Christ was born again. And they, what are the implications of that? The implication was that Christ was actually a sinner. Because only sinners need to be born again. The epistle of John. Second chapter. First John chapter 2. Speaks about the Antichrist. Going down, you read the apostles speaking of Antichrist, plural. People who do not have the Father and the Son, God in the Bible describes them as Antichrist. They may not be. The main person, the main anti the main antichrist, who is yet to come. But every one of these people, and you have to listen to them, it does not take much for you to see that they do not preach Christ. They preach signs and wonders. They preach miracles. They preach they preach loss of consciousness. but never Christ. And the Bible says, those who do not have the Father and the Son together, they do not have God, that they are actually Antichrist, with small letter A. So very sadly, Kenai Hagen was an Antichrist. Very, very sadly, Dr. Adeboye works as an antichrist. These people work as antichrist because they teach things that, are, that have got nothing, no glory for Christ. If you listen to, just go back on this video once, 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 you, once, you, once you finish and see the teachings of Kenneth Hagin and you see the demonition in the glory of Christ all the way through is it that dismissing the blood of christ is it that dismissing the person of christ is it that dismissing the the conception of christ is it that dismissing the fact that christ was god so basically these people work directly against the glory of christ they are antichrist On your screen, you see another teaching of Dr. Adeboye's very powerful man of God. Very, very powerful. And if you listen to them, you this shouldn't be something strange to you too. What do you have on your screen now? 
that God was a God of faith. When they say that to you, very often you do not know the deep implication of what they are saying. That God actually created the world by faith. That God had faith in his own faith. He had faith in his own words. By redefining the Bible's word faith. By now saying that faith is the reliance you put on your on the words coming out of your mouth. They have succeeded in putting something higher than God. Because they now say that God operates by what they call principles of faith. You can't listen long to these people without hearing what they call principles of faith. They are principles of evil. And they are also to give you the impression that and many of their people, when I talk to them, they are, they are shameless enough. Yes, yes, we are gods. Yes, we are gods. Since we can speak, only God speak. Since we can speak, we are gods. The anger of God, the anger of the true God against every being, either angelic or human, that calls himself God, these people, are totally ignorant about that, about that, concerning that anger. They do not know that calling yourself a god, either small g or big g or whatever g you call yourself, you are calling causes on yourself, causes that are written in the Bible, causes that are directly written in the Bible. I do not need to pronounce it; they are there. And these people go about day in, day out, week in, week out, feeding people with shamanic teachings, giving them the impression that since they are speaking beings, that they are gods. God's answer in the book of Jeremiah that the gods that did not make the earth and the heavens that they shall perish from under the heaven they are totally unaware of it i i pray i pray i pray you you ask god to forgive you for whatever time you have spent listening to word of faith people May I continue to ask God to forgive me for not doing this early enough or wasting my life, basically. I continue to ask him to forgive me for not bringing this to you long before now. <laughs>